All right, so um, welcome everybody. Um, again, we are here today um, uh, to kick off the uh, 2022 uh, LD4 conference on linked data. Uh, this morning's uh, demo workshop um, uh, is uh, uh, hosted by a group of us uh, listed here on this first slide. So Diane Shaw, Jackie Shea from the Smithsonian, Jim Hahn from uh, the University of Pennsylvania, Alex Whalen from NYU, uh, 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 Brian Luna Lucero, uh, Esther Jackson, Melanie Wacker, and myself from Columbia University, and um, Honor Moody and Christine from Sebner Eslau uh, from Harvard. Um, and our topic is uh, tracking alternate labels for subject headings with Wikibase. We will focus on um, a few things on in terms of uh, just practical logistics of working in Wikibase instances. In our case, we are currently working in a Wikibase cloud instance, but we'll talk about that um, those distinctions uh, in just a little bit. Um, uh, so to give a quick overview of the session, we will cover the differences between Wikidata, Wikibase, and Wikibase Cloud. Um, we will look at uh, creating items and properties in Wikibase. Uh, we will look at using the query service in a Wikibase instance. Uh, we will also cover using quick statements with a Wikibase instance, um, OpenRefine, um, and how it can be used uh, with Wikibases. Um, and um, for simplicity, we will probably use Wikibase to refer to our Wikibase cloud instance throughout the, this workshop, uh, just because um, Wikibase cloud instance is a lot longer than just saying Wikibase. Um, so even though the, uh, there's some distinctions between uh, Wikibase um, standalone instance and a Wikibase cloud instance, uh, for all intents and purposes, we are going to use those terms interchangeably today. Um, and uh, I have dropped this into the chat before, but the um, the course materials are uh, all available at, on this GitHub page. I just dropped that into the chats. Um, you can also use this uh, shortened link here to get to that. Um, so I'll hold here for just a second um, to let people go um, get to that link. And again, it's in the chat if you are um, just joining us. Okay. Right, and uh, before we get going with the session, um, I also wanted to briefly introduce the uh, LD4 Wikibase Working Hour. So the LD4 Wikibase Working Hour seeks to create a space for GLAM professionals experimenting with Wikibase um, implementation. Uh, Wikibase is the software that Wikidata is built on. Um, we'd like to learn collaboratively and share tips, tools, and resources. The uh, working group will facilitate identification of areas for collaboration among in institutions experimenting with separate institutional Wikibase instances. And topics that we are considering or trying to cover are shared data modeling of properties, common to many GLAM collections. We, we haven't done a whole lot of that yet, but it's certainly something we'd be interested in in the future. Um, the development of documentation for the GLAM Wikibase community, learning about each other's Wikibase projects, workflows, and tools. That's probably been the strongest focus of the group. Um, we often feature a monthly presentation where uh, um, an institution or an individual uh, comes and talks about their project that they're doing in Wikibase. Um, and then we explore the development of mechanisms for channeling community feedback to the developers of Wikibase and the broader Wikimedia community. Um, and we'd like to complement or supplement wherever possible the work from existing Wikidata groups. And uh, we do have a project page. Um, I believe that's also linked in our GitHub page. Uh, right now, we don't have any. Um, programming plans and uh for the next month or so but we are working on some programming for september uh through the end of 2022 so stay tuned um there's information on that project page also about how you can sign up for um uh updates and announcements and um i'd also like to introduce our test instance in wikibase cloud um so we'll look at it shortly um but uh uh, so we originally built our instance in WB stack, which was the predecessor of Wikibase Cloud in 2021. 
Um, this was migrated literally just days ago <laughs> to Wikibase Cloud, um, uh, which is the successor of WB Stack. Um, WB Stack was essentially um, a an experiment created by a developer named Adam Shoreland, who was affiliated with Wikimedia Deutschland, um, to uh, offer Wikibase as a service, as a hosted service um, for free. Um, so, uh, but uh, Honor is going to cover uh, some of that history and backstory in the next section. So, I won't get into uh, details right now about that. Um, so the um, overall goal of this test instance was to create a repository of local labels being used for in place of uh, LCSH subject headings. So as many folks are know, there's been a lot of um, interest in the last couple of years in um, kind of decolon decolonizing uh, cataloging and subject headings and, uh, you know, um, taking a critical view to um, uh, how some vocabularies like LCSH are being used. And um, uh, so uh, we thought it would be interesting to look at uh, uh, using Wikibase to just document all the different um, efforts that are being made along those lines. And um, yeah, um, we didn't have a sustainability plan in place for this. Uh, it's just been an exercise and an experiment. And in fact, since we started um, the project, uh, as many of you are aware, um, there's been a lot of changes. So uh, when we started out, um, illegal aliens was still a valid LCSH subject heading, and that has since been changed um, to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, undocumented um, immigrants or immigration. I'm blanking now on the specific, um, the specific new LCSH term that uh, replaced that um, former heading. Uh, so uh, we have a draft data model that's centered on labels, not concepts. Um, think of the RDA entity uh, Nomen and its affiliated appellation properties rather than thinking of uh, a kind of, um, I guess, um, content oriented model. So we're talking about the labels, not about the things that the labels refer to. Um, so we are not attempting to create new alternative labels, but just to document alternative labels currently in use um, at different institutions. Um, and we are also not trying to replicate or import the entirety of LCSH, just the aspects needed to document the use of alternative labels for LCSH. Um, we have organized the data model around shapes or primary entities described by the model. Some properties repeat across entities, um, as um, you could probably imagine if you're familiar with Wikidata, um, every entity has a label, um, possibly an alias and a description as well. And um, going a bit deeper into the data model, um, here are some of the primary entities. Um, so we have a preferred local label that is related to an external label. Um, these both may be part of a vocabulary um, and uh, could be used by a given institution. We also um, uh, added into the data model um, the entity's system and policy, but we were never really completed um, modeling them out. So they are, although they are present, um, we haven't fully integrated those two um, entities into the data model. I'll show a graphic um, uh, uh, in the next slide uh, just to clarify some of this. Um, and then there were a few um, entities that were proposed, um, but we haven't um, advanced yet. So these include source citation, revision proposal, and replacement method, so which would refer specifically to how the terms were being replaced. Um, so whether that was, you know, through a, um, uh, a one-time replacement in the authority tables of an ILS or on the discovery layer or some somewhere else. Um, uh, we thought it would be interesting to document that possibly, but it gets very tricky um, to model that. Um, so here's a, a kind of a, a simplified graphic of the data model. Um, again, at the center of the data model is a local label, which is used by an institution. It's related to um, an external label, so that's a two-way um, two uh, relation. Um, it may be paired with um, uh, another, so a local label may be paired with another local label. Um, 
that is the case. Uh, um, and again, I'm blanking on some of the, the, the uh, recent changes to LCSH, but a few of the terms um, in the uh, kind of in the um, illegal aliens um, set of terms uh, were split actually into two terms. Um, so that's an example where a single external label might be split into two uh, preferred local labels. Um, and uh, both the local label and the external label, um, certainly the external label are affiliated with a source vocabulary. And then you see over in the bottom corner, un unlinked to any other entities or systems and policies. So um, our outcome so far, um, it's all been very initial. Uh, so from October to December of 2021, we hosted three sessions um, on using the WB stack instance um, devoted to this concept. Um, the sessions were focused on collaborative data modeling, property creation, and item creation. But we have a long way to go. Uh, so most properties have been created, but only a relatively small number of items and statements have been made. Um, in June um, of 2022, our, um, our Wikibase instance was migrated to uh, Wikibase Cloud. So that actually uh, formally happens, uh, I think, on the 1st of July. So we were down to the wire in terms of um, getting this, uh, this presentation prepared. So this is what the instance looks like. Um, are you, okay, yeah, you can still see my screen, uh, I hope. Um, and uh, if we just search for, um, let's search for undocumented and see what happens. Um, so we see that, um, Here's an example of an, an item for undocumented immigrants. And again, this was created before LC, LC made the changes to LCSH. So at the time, um, this was still uh, a preferred label used by uh, um, a number of institutions in, in the place of uh, the LCSH term illegal aliens, uh, which uh, we see here is an instance of an external label um, uh, from the source vocabulary uh, Library of Congress subject headings. Um, so, yeah. All right. So, I'm going to go back to the slideshow. And sorry, my Zoom controls are getting in the way. Um, And uh, I'm going to hand things over now to Honor, who's going to talk about the differences between um, Wikibase, Wikidata, and Wikibase Cloud. Thanks, Ryan. Um, and I'm also going to talk more in depth about Wikibase Cloud, and I'm going to situate it contextually within the Wikibase ecosystem and the Wikibase ecosystem as a larger part of the Wikimedia and Wikimedia Deutsch, Wikimedia Foundation and Wikimedia Deutschland linked open data strategy, um, just to give everyone a kind of sense of sort of the larger picture um, in which Wikibase Cloud is operating. Um, so first of all, Wikibase is the set of extensions developed by Wikimedia Deutschland for MediaWiki, the open source software that was designed for use by Wikipedia. Wikibase consists of two primary extensions, the Wikibase repository and the Wikibase client. Although in practice, it's almost always implemented with additional extensions, including the Wikidata query service, which we'll be hearing about more later on. Um, and as a software, it's a data model agnostic tool for creating and storing structured data. That is, it doesn't come with any data model. You supply that through the creation of properties. And it is also the software behind Wikidata and was developed for Wikidata, and Wikidata was the first instance of a Wikibase. So many of you probably already know this, but Wikidata in turn is a multilingual collaborative knowledge graph powered by the MediaWiki software and the Wikibase extensions. That is to say, it is an instance of Wikibase. Um, and Wikidata was really created for the larger Wiki um, media community and serves um, to support other Wikimedia projects, particularly the many, many language Wikipedias. Its original use cases was to provide automated linking of um, articles across, uh, on the same topic across language Wikipedias, as well as to support the sustainability of editing, particularly for the smaller language Wikipedia communities. Um, where you had 300 plus language Wikipedias um, and um, they would often 
data would become out of date, say, for example, if somebody left off office, their terms of office in the info box wouldn't reflect the most recent um, position or the end of a position, also, um, for example, death dates. So here, um, the intent was to have a shared knowledge base that could populate this information so that the Wikipedia editors could then in turn focus their energies on the creation of new knowledge and new articles rather than database maintenance, which I think is something we can all relate to. Um, <clears throat> and then Wikibase Cloud is Wikibase software as a service supported by Wikimedia Deutschland. That is, it's installation packages and hosting for instances of Wikibase that's provided by Wikimedia Deutschland for other individuals and organizations. Um, next slide, please. Um, so a little bit more about Wikibase Cloud. Brian's already covered this, but it is Wikibase instances hosted by Wikimedia Deutschland based on WB stack code that was developed by Adam Shoreland, whose uh, username is at Shore. Um, and WB stack was really the alpha version. Wikibase Cloud is the beta version. So it's currently a closed beta version that was rolled out in 2022 and was limited to the existing WBSAC instances of Wikibase, although it is expected to open up for um, new instances later in 2022. And on the Wikibase uh, cloud page, there's a place where you can um, request um, to have your name added to the wait list. And again, as Ryan pointed out, the Wikibase working hour test instance was just very recently migrated, you know, wee moment of panic, but here we are and all is well that ends well. Um, and what's interesting to know, so Wikibase Cloud being supported by Wikimedia Deutschland, um, and there are a few reasons for that, but uh, one of the biggest is that it's a core component of the Wikimedia Foundation and Wikimedia Deutschland linked to open data strategy for building out the Wikibase ecosystem, which I'll talk a little bit more next. Um, but here, the um, primary target groups for Wikibase Cloud are research groups, private individuals, and less well-funded organizations that want to share free and open data with the world, but lack the dedicated resources needed to maintain the software themselves. And so it is designed for ease of use rather than maximum customization. Um, and here it's an important component of the Wikibase ecosystem in supporting knowledge equity by um, supporting less well-funded organizations and underrepresented communities in order to develop both the knowledge graph writ large as on the link to and data web, as well as the technical uh, skills and community infrastructure needed to support um, this robust ecosystem. Um, so what is this Wiko, Wikibase ecosystem? Well, the Wikibase ecosystem was um, has been kind of kicking around for a little bit, but really came to the fore in um, the strategy for Wikibase ecosystem, which was one of four papers in the 2019 uh, sort of Wikidata Wikibase strategy, and it had um, several primary goals. So one was to open up data that is hidden in silos. So this is to say um, many um, organizations don't necessarily want their data, or Wikidata isn't necessarily appropriate for all data that different institutions might have, whether because of concerns or institutional um, requirements around licensing of the data, or um, concerns about the data model itself, where Wikidata is really supporting the Wikimedia projects and has this collaborative data model development. But um, some people may have data that requires different uh, data models. And so having your own Wikibase allows you to um, use, de use and develop your own data models, although you may also use in a Wikibase the properties from Wikidata itself. Um, it also is, a, and then through this, by having more data that's out there available on the open web. We can connect data to surface undiscovered connections. So I think we all know that, um, you know, sometimes the really interesting scholarship and knowledge creation happens at the boundaries of domain expertise, where maybe you don't know quite as much about something, um, but that maybe a different area of domain expertise would have sort of related content and bringing those sort of two sort of separately created sets of data together, you can really learn new and exciting things. Um, the Wiki, Wikibase ecosystem, again, is also has this core function of community development and creation of a community of praxis um, to enable people to collaborate, 
with each other to build both their sort of individual knowledge bases as well as their technical skills for creating and managing that data. Um, also the development of tooling that might be not appropriate for Wikidata or alternative tooling where the Wikidata tooling doesn't necessarily serve the needs of individual communities. Um, and those of you who were at the um, Barbara Fisher's excellent presentation at the Wikibase Hour in June on the uh, Deutsche Bibliothek Nationale's um, authority file, the um, Gemeinsame Normdatei, or the GND, um, had a very similar image to this one of the sort of Wikibase ecosystem where the GND was one of the Wikibase symbols in that Wikibase ecosystem. And again, the GND is really kind of become a pillar and has worked very closely with um, Wikidata, uh, Wikimedia Deutschland to sort of bolster this Wikimedia ecosystem. Um, and Barbara used this really great analogy of sort of the community garden with people sort of individually tending their plots of domain expertise that I really liked a lot. And I think we can kind of think about that as well. Um, so the, a robust Wikibase ecosystem will also strengthen the open knowledge movement as a whole in a new decentralized linked data ecosystem. So this is this idea that um, if we don't take advantage of the opportunities presented to us now, we run the risk of having of not having a linked open data web because the big players will sort of take control over knowledge base and software development, um, and they won't have access universally or amongst the world at any rate um, to this data or the data creation or the tools for creating it. Um, and finally, it enables the creation of new products and services. And this is just this reminder that Wikibase stores the data, but the data needs to be consumed and used to sort of build out that world of knowledge, to share the knowledge we already have and to create new knowledge. Um, and the <clears throat> Wikibase ecosystem um, is sort of geared in some ways to the GLAM professionals. Um, and the GLAM community has been called out by Wikimedia Foundation and Wikimedia Deutschland as natural partners and allies um, of the Wikimedia Foundation of the sort of Wikimedia movement as a whole, um, and in particular, the sort of um, open knowledge movement. So um, that's sort of the larger Wikibase ecosystem. Uh, next slide, please. And I'm just gonna leave you with a few links uh, to the Wikibase and Wikimedia linked open data strategy. There's the 20, um, 20, most recent 2021 um, strategy that builds on the four part strategy of 2019. And then there's also the Wiki Library Manifesto, which is a company written by the Wikimedia Deutschland and uh, the German National Library and has been signed by approximately 40 other libraries, mostly in Europe and also um, IFLA is a signatory as well. So please do take a look at these. The Wikibase ecosystem article from the 2019 strategy is, I think really, they're all well worth reading, but it particularly the Wikibase ecosystem. So hopefully I've given you a little bit of context here for um, the Wikibase cloud as a whole and sort of where we're sitting in it with our test instance. Okay, thank you, Honor, and um, I'm gonna um, take. Uh, I'm gonna start presenting again uh, on uh, creating items and properties in Wikibase. Um, so I'd like to thank uh, my colleagues Melanie Wacker and Diane Shaw for uh, drafting these slides, um, and um, hopefully I do their do their content justice. Um, so. Um, so we'll look uh, a little bit um, at actual the actual forms for creating items and properties in our Wikibase Cloud instance. Uh, but before we get into that, I, uh, we just wanted to cover a couple of uh, considerations that folks might want to think about uh, before they just start creating the items and properties. Um, so when developing a Wikibase, it's important to keep in mind that you're designing a database that should be able to yield useful results from a Sparkle query. So keep the level of classes and subclasses, if you have them, simple enough for returning useful query results. Avoid creating statements that are too nested with qualifiers which generate complex hierarchies of data. Um, and at, anyone who's worked in Wikidata is probably familiar with um, with this idea that uh, you can have statements that have qualifiers and it can get pretty complex. Um, we'll maybe look at that briefly. 
um, a little bit later, particularly during the query query section. Um, but um, this is a key consideration because if you can't actually uh, meaningfully access the data, it's it's questionable how how worthwhile it is to to actually you know create and manage the data. Okay, so depending on your needs, um, decide which properties and items must be created at a minimum uh, and start from there. Uh, you can always add more later as your database grows, but um, so yeah, if you just focus on the minimal viable product and then um, as you start um, working in the wiki base, you, might, you may start to realize what other um, properties uh, you might need. Um, it's, it, it's, it's kind of an iterative process, I would say, where um, it's, it's difficult to, to plan it all out fully from, from the start. So that there's gonna be a lot of uh, unexpected, um, unexpected uh, uh, things that emerge as you start actually working in the wiki base. So, um, and it's also good um, to document your usage instructions and preferred practices. You can do that through a separate wiki base page. Um, so you, you, as with, uh, uh, Wikidata or Wikipedia, it's pretty easy to create um, just, uh, you know, pages in the Wikibase instance, um, or uh, in the discussion tab of an item or property, or uh, in a usage instructions property. Um, so make sure that the items or properties uh, which you're creating aren't already in the Wikibase instance. Um, this is, of course, uh, a lot more difficult to do in a uh, shared um, decentralized environment than it is, um, you know, in a more uh, managed uh, uh, smaller team environments. Um, but even still, I think that uh, during our, our editing events, I think we might have had um, a duplicate item or um, maybe even a property that has appeared in our Wikibase cloud instance. Um, it's not the end of the world, but of course it's better to avoid that sort of um, duplication. Um, and uh, it's important to avoid this uh, in particular with properties because once the data type is set, a duplicate property can only be overwritten with a property that has the same data type. So um, this is just to say that um, if you have two properties that are functionally the same, but they have different data types, then you're gonna have to go and convert um, all of that data um, before you can just get rid of, uh, before you can kind of merge those two properties. So it's, it's gonna create a lot of extra work uh, to get that, that um, those two properties and the data that's been filled out for both of them to harmonize so that you can um, you know, clean up your data set. Um, it can be helpful to maintain a separate sortable spreadsheet with a list of the items and properties uh, created for your Wikibase. Uh, especially if the search engine isn't always reliable. Um, this is not ex this is somewhat the case, or it can be the case with uh, uh, Wikibase Cloud, uh, just because um, you know it's a free service, um, so uh, it's it's not as as quick often as uh, Wikidata is. Although uh, there, even in Wikidata, I'm sure folks have experienced some performance issues. So it is nice to have this type of um, ready reference. Um, or uh, a kind of application profile that um, goes into greater detail, especially for your local usage, um, what your preferred practices are. Okay, um, and then I'm just gonna jump into, um, I'm gonna jump out of this and go into, um, go into our Wikibase instance, uh, which I think is here. So, um, so if you are in a, um, if you're in, um, uh, a Wikibase instance. Um, this is our uh, alternate labels Wikibase instance. Um, you just go over here and click new item if you want to. Oh, and I have been logged out <laughs> again. So bear with me for a second. Um, actually, hold on. Am I logged in? Oh, I'm logged in on this one. So I'm going to just go over there. Um, so I'm going to click new item here. And um, so I won't actually create a new item, but let's say that, um, you know, uh, let's say that I were creating a new item. Um, you, the form is asks you to specify the, la the language of the label. In our case, it's English. That's, I think the default um, set sort of in the admin panel. Um, and then uh, let's just say I wanna, 
make the label kittens. Um, and then um, and then you can enter some some aliases. Um, so things like this, um, and then pipe to limit them. And uh, once you create the item, then you could um, you have the option to add in um, preferred labels, descriptions, and and aliases in other languages and scripts. Um, but in a nutshell, it's it's a pretty easy process. It's just filling out a simple web form. Um, so if we go to um, create a new property, um, it's in the same area, just this left navigation bar. And you'll note uh, this is quite different than the process for making a new property in Wikidata itself, where there's a um, you essentially have to fill out a proposal form um, and send it to the community for comments. Um, in a Wikibase instance, um, there is not that type of social infrastructure in place. Um, so by default, um, any logged in user can create a new property. Um, you can change that um, in the uh, user management area, but um, I'm just gonna show you by default what it looks like to create a new property. Um, so again, you specify the language of the label uh, for the property. Um, and if you wanted to enter in um, uh, labels in other languages, you can do that after you create the property. So let's say that um, uh, I'm gonna say that uh, we had noted in an earlier slide that uh, revision proposal was, um, was a property or an entity that I was interested in. Um, so maybe we'll say revision proposal number um, and I'll specify LCSH for that. Um, and you could write a description. And uh, again, you can enter in aliases. Um, so I'm, you can just imagine aliases are just alternate labels um, and uh, they should be in English uh, or in the same language that you specify for the preferred label. Again, you can add other aliases and other languages and scripts elsewhere. And then finally, you have to pick a data type. Um, so you see that you have a number of options here. Uh, they are kind of specific to uh, the wiki, um, media wiki um, ecosystem, but uh, in short, um, I'll just highlight a few of them. So item means that something has to be uh, formally um, an item in your wiki base instance. Um, and then uh, there's things like URL, tabular data, string, of course, is just a text string. Um, and, you know, you have uh, things that like uh, represent dates and times. Um, uh, external identifiers, if you if you wanted to point to like the LCSH or the uh, id.loc.gov number, or the OCLC number for, for um, a particular um, item, you could do that. Um, so yeah, that is in brief how you create the a property. So I'm, again, I'm not gonna create it because uh, we don't need that those properties um, in our instance right now. Um, I will return to the slides. Um, so um, just a couple of additional notes about properties. So properties can also be used as qualifiers on items uh, or on, not on items, on statements. Um, uh, and you may have seen um, that used, uh, for example, um, in Wikidata, you might have a, an entity for something like Joseph Biden uh, and then the statement is occupation president um, is, uh, and then the start date and end date are qualifiers on that statements of occupation. So that's a common use case for uh, a property being used as a qualifier. Um, so properties can, can be items and items can be properties. An example of this again is occupation. Um, uh, and um, when you're creating properties, um, uh, you might want to consider um, whether you want to make just a kind of bi-directional um, property 
or whether you want to make a kind of pair of reciprocal properties. Um, there's different use cases for uh, why you might want to take those two different approaches. And an example of reciprocal properties is it has part or uh, paired with part of, whereas uh, you might be able to model that. Um, um, or in some instances, you could potentially model um, uh, a bidirectional property or reciprocal property pair as a simple property pair. So, um, and I don't have a good example <laughs> off the top of my head, but uh, it, 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 is, it is very possible. Um, so you can set um, uh, preference um, in the case of multiple statements using the same property in an item. Um, for example, to distinguish between current and obsolete slash wrong identifiers. Um, so, um, and I will go into the to the Wikibase instance and show that in, in a second. Um, and some recommended basic properties to use for items. So every kind of item should have an instance of property, which basically says what um, what's uh, what type of item it is, or it gives a you know a basic shape to the item. Um, external identifiers like VIAF or Wikidata queue number. Um, humans, uh, you might consider having a birth date, a death date, an occupation, an employer, and an educated at property for humans. Um, organizations might uh, need an inception date, a country uh, of uh, where they are located, a street address, and an official website. Oh, and um, so I'm gonna hand things over and uh, to um, Esther now to uh, go into uh, a discussion about uh, using uh, different query services with uh, Wikibase instances. Awesome, thank you so much, Ryan. And do you wanna do you wanna do your own slides or do you want me to just advance the slides, Esther? I mean, I'm, either way is fine with me. Um, I'm happy to trade off. I might do some live demo stuff. Okay, I'll stop my share. Yeah, thank you, great, mm -hmm. all right. Okay, so I believe that you should be seeing my presentation screen now. Is that correct? Yes. Great, perfect, awesome. So uh, I have to give thanks to Christine uh, Fern. Sub I'm so sorry, Christine. Christine Fern Subner uh, Eslau, who is the co-author of these this part of the presentation, and is the Wikidata query uh, whiz who put together our queries. No, putting you on the spot. Okay, um, so I'm going to talk a bit about. Uh, query services, uh, when you would use different query services, differences between them, that kind of thing. Um, so you would use the Wikidata query service to query Wikidata proper, as you might expect. Uh, the Docker Wiki, Wikibase query service would be used for a, a local installation of Wikibase. And the Wikibase cloud query service would be used to query a base that's hosted uh, for on Wikibase Cloud. And so for the purposes of our presentation, we are looking at a Wikibase Cloud query service. Okay. Uh, and so although we're not talking about querying Wikidata proper, for the purposes of this presentation, it is the best documented of the query services. Um, and Wikibase querying is very similar to Wikidata querying. Uh, so this is the Wikidata query service that we see here. You would mainly use the Wikidata query service to query Wikidata, although you can also use it to query additional resources as well through the use of prefixes. Um, however, you don't have to use prefixes to use the Wikidata query service. Okay. Uh, and so it's important to understand prefixes um, for Wikidata querying, but then also for Wikibase querying, Wikicloud querying. So the subjects uh, and predicates, the first and second values of the triple must always be stored as a URI. Uh, so for example, if the subject is universe Q1, it will be stored with the following URI. Uh, prefixes allow us to write that long URI in a shorter form. So instead of that string in the second bullet point, you could write something like WD colon Q1. Uh, unlike subjects and predicates, the objects, the object or the triple's third value can be either a URI or a literal, for example, a number or a string. So the Wikidata query service understands many shortcut abbreviations known as prefixes. Uh, some are internal to Wikidata, for example, WD, WDT, 
PSP, PS, BD, and many others are commonly used external prefixes like RDF, SKOS, OWL, and schema. And so those are the external sources that I was talking about that you're able to query using the Wikidata query service. And so here are uh, some prefix examples. These are the uh, like the default most commonly used prefixes, um, plus also the OWL prefix, just to throw in another external prefix um, so that you can see what it looks like. And we'll talk a little, we'll talk more about that, but that's just like the introduction. Um, and so then this is the Docker wiki based query service, uh, the front end for users. They're visually identical. It's visually identical to the Wikidata query service. Um, however, you will have to modify your prefixes to reflect the instance you would like to query. In this case, your local instance of Wikibase. So you're going to have to make sure that you're not trying to query Wikidata proper because those are a lot of the defaults in the prefixes. Um, so note that the pre preset prefixes in the primary Wikidata query service do not carry over. So even though they show up as something that's available, it's not something that you can use right out of the box. Uh, furthermore, if you want to include Wikidata, data from Wikidata in, your, in the queries for your local Wikibase, you also have to download a local copy of that data for that purpose, um, or you have to configure things in a, um, in, a, in a more complex way. So it's best to think of this query service as being tied to your local Wikibase. It's for the data that you put into the Wikibase, you're using it to get information about that data, to look at your own models and information. Um, it's also important to note that when you set up your wiki base in order to get this lovely query base or query service, excuse me, you will have to go through the installation steps um, specifically for this uh, in order to install it as a part of your setup. And that is in the, the setup for this is in, included in your Docker Compose extra YAML file. Okay. Uh, and so on the left hand side of the screen, you can see the string, the command uh, at the top that you would use the Docker Compose uh, to include the Docker Compose extra YAML. Uh, and then on the right, you can see most of what's included in that file, um, just for your reference. And so a standalone wiki base instance uh, can be configured to support its own prefixes as well. And there's some links here to Rhizome's art based query service as a way of example. Okay. Um, and as Honor mentioned, uh, and Ryan perhaps as well, um, because Wikidata runs on the Wikibase software, many of the tools that have been developed to work with Wikidata have been decoupled from Wikidata, the wikidata.org, uh, to work with local Wikibase installations as well. Um, and some examples can be found at that link. Um, this isn't true for every tool that's been built for Wikidata, but it is true for uh, a number of them. Okay. All right, and so finally, last but not least, uh, this is the Wikibase Cloud Query Service. Um, and again, it looks very visually similar to Wikidata, the Wikidata Query Service. So the good news is, is if you're comfortable with the Wikidata Query Service, you're you, you know you're part of the way there. Um, there's a lot of similarities. Okay. All right. So when you open the query service uh, for the wiki cl wiki based cloud instance we're using for this workshop it'll look very familiar to you as a wiki data user uh, however when you kick the tires a bit you'll find that not everything works as you'd expect if you're running your own wiki based instance some of this is a matter of configuration as we talked about but for the purposes of the wiki based cloud that we're using today or any other fresh out of the box wiki base be aware that there are some assumptions baked into the Wikidata query service that you'll have to work around. Prefixes need to be specified for each query when you're working in the Wikibase Cloud query service. Uh, the handy UI in the left-hand pane called the Query Helper, going back there, will assume that your instance of property is P31 uh, and that you don't need the prefixes you added. So that leads to complication if you assume it's gonna, if you think it's gonna work right away, it, it, it isn't necessarily gonna work the way you expect. Um, and if you need built-in example queries about cats, for example, which is I think the first uh, query service for the Wikidata, the query example for the Wikidata query service, um, you'll have to paste those in from somewhere else and then also look at your prefixes. And you'd have to have cats in your Wikibase as well, your Wikibase cloud. Okay. 
All right. Just looking to see if there's anything else to say here. So these are just the invisible differences and missing features to be aware of. All right. Um, and so this is the URL for our uh, demo Wikibase Clouds query, Wikibase Cloud Clouds query service. It's like a tongue twister. This entire presentation. Um, and you're welcome to visit that link, or you can just follow along with the slides for now. So these are a handful of properties and items that already exist in our Wikibase Cloud instance, and the, UR, uh, the URLs that the query service uses to access them, the URIs, note that they are a little bit different than their property or concept URIs. They are not, I, sorry, they're also not identical to the URLs you see in your browser when you look at the item page or a property page. So if you're trying to set up a prefix and you need the URI for an item, you're not gonna grab the URL that's in the address bar. You will go to the page that you're, the page for an item or uh, an object, sorry, an item or a property, and you will uh, grab the stable URL from the left-hand nav. So similar to, you know, other links that you've seen in other wiki, products, there's links on the left hand side for your wiki base as well um, to get that URI that you'd be using for querying. Okay. So when you use a wiki base instance whose query service hasn't been configured for automatic prefix support in the same way that Wikidata has, you can use uh, these URIs directly in your queries. This example query generates a set a list of LCSH terms and the institutions that have replaced them with a preferred local label. Um, so basically, there's some annotation here on the slide. Uh, the item has a source vocabulary of Library of Congress. The item has an alternative related term. And the related term is in use by an institution. Um, and I, I see a frozen Christine. So I just want to ask, am I still coming through? Yes, you're, you're, you're still you're still coming through. Fine good, in Europe you. too. Oh, good. Thank you so much. Uh, I had a moment of panic. Like I'm presenting to myself. Um, okay. And these are the query results from that query. And there's also a URL there if you would like to uh, to view them. Um, and so we have the uh, the Q value on the under the LCSH column. You have the label for that Q number, and then you have uh, the institution uh, in the third column with the Q number. And on the far right hand side, you have the label for that institution. And so if you were looking at this um, and reading it, you would see that alien detention centers is a uh, an LCSH label that Columbia Universities has an alternate label for, essentially. Okay. Uh, however, you'll find that constructing URLs, troubleshooting typos, and reading your very long queries will get annoying. Uh, you can get around this by defining prefixes. Here we are, prefixes. The bolded parts of the formula on this slide will vary based on the location of your Wikibase instance and your personal preferences. Okay, so here's the same query that we just saw, uh, but with the prefixes specified at the top. So the prefix WDT and the prefix WD are set at the top. Um, please note that while we're using that while we've used pre prefixes that are familiar to us from Wikidata queries, so the WDT, the WD, they're not actually pointing at Wikidata's properties and items, but at our Wikibase data. Um, so you could call those two prefixes something else, even if they were. Regardless of where they were pointing, you could call them something else. Um, and you can see just from this slide that the uh, the code is much more human readable. We're able to annotate it in the same line, um, which is really helpful if you're if you're trying to read it and keep things straight. And if you're you know maybe newer to the query service and there's too many URIs for you to really parse um, easily. So prefixes make make that a lot easier. Okay. Um, and so as in Wikidata's query service, you can also choose a visualization after you've returned your results, or you can specify it as a comment at the head of your query. Um, so that's the hashtag default view colon timeline. That's the comment at the beginning. In this case, we've constructed a timeline to show when different institutions 
uh, adopted which preferred local headings. Uh, in order to bring in dates, which are qualifiers on used by statements, we've defined a couple more prefixes. Uh, please note that the dates here may be provisional or approximate for the purposes of demonstration. And this is what those uh, results look like. So you can see um, that in September of 2020, Harvard University uh, libraries started using non-citizen detention centers. Um, in January of 2021, non-citizen criminals was a term that Harvard University libraries started using, uh, and so did Columbia University libraries, and so on and so forth. Okay. All right. Um, so we do have a hands-on activity um, for folks who are interested in giving it a shot. Um, I will say we're pointing to our, uh, our test uh, wiki-based cloud instance. So if 100 of us try to do this query at the same time, there's a possibility that things won't work exactly as expected. But if you would like to give it a shot, um, I'll explain what the slide says first, and then, uh, then you can get going. So there is a, uh, a link here that you can open as a starting point. It will take you to a list of search results, um, and maybe I can do it here. Let's see. Uh, and you won't see the query automatically, but if you go to the, if you hover on the right hand side of your screen, you can click uh, Edit Sparkle. And the thing that you are going to try to do is you're going to try to add a used by column. And you will do that by uh, insert first inserting the following line that starts with optional into the query and then uh, inserting into the select statement this uh, used by label. And I will stop sharing and let folks give that a shot and maybe put questions in the chat or. Uh... Would you post a tiny URL on the chat? Absolutely. And I'll note that uh, in the GitHub page, all of the query, like the pre-formatted queries are also on the GitHub page um, that we shared in the chats a few times. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll definitely, Amber, let me, I'll share my screen again. Okay, so I'll just do it from my presenter viewer. Hopefully that's okay. Um, so you're going to open the tiny URL that's in um, in the chat, and that will take you to the uh, query results. So you're not able to see the query from here. You're just able to see the results. If you go to Edit Sparkle, um, which shows up if you hover on the right hand side of the screen, you will see the query, and you will be able to uh, change it. And so what you'll do is you will insert this optional tag into the uh, the query, including the bracket. Um, and then you'll also insert this used by label uh, into the select statement. And then when you, oops, sorry, I'm, I've got several query windows open as you might be able to tell. Um, when you think that that's worked, you can run the query, which I think is, let's see here. So you can run it once first just to make sure it's going. You can make your modifications here, run it again. Uh, and if that's working, you can then also add uh, this used by label into the select statement as well. And then when all of that is said and done, you should have four columns. Let's see, uh, how's it going for folks? Do you want, does anybody want to put into chat or, or comment? Uh, um, did you mention that you have to add the used by on the select line also to get it uh, viewable on the on the table? Right, yes. For it to be viewable, That's you that. have to include that. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's a question here for me to leave the slide up. Let me, oh, that's I will, it, yeah. let, I'll copy the optional tag into chat um, and then, Hold on, a tag 
I suppose. Uh, okay. Thank you, Honor. Um, <clears throat> if folks do have issues with their query, um, do we want to ask them to just put it in the ether pad and for collaborative troubleshooting? Yeah, that sounds great. Um, I can also show, well, I'll show the results just in the interest of time. I'll give people the answers. See, I think this has everything. Yes, so we have four columns. So um, I uh, nested my my optional query, my additional uh, aspect of that query, into my uh, my select statement here. And the oh, my Zoom window is just blocking things. Okay, uh, and so now I have four columns at the the bottom, which is what I was hoping for. Um, so I have the preferred local label, the Q value, in the far left column. Uh, in the next column, I've got the uh, label text for that item. So American Poetry Indigenous Authors. I have a used by column, which has the key value for the institution that's using the um, particular term. And then I have the used by label. So this is the label, the name uh, of the institution that's using the uh, preferred local label. And I think I will stop sharing there. Uh, just so that we have time to get through everything else, but we can always come back to more uh, local, we can always come back to more query uh, hands on activities and feel free to play around um, with our test instance and try to formulate different queries that you think might be, be interesting. I think quick statements are next. I will, um, uh, maybe we could uh, 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 t take a minute just to take some questions and uh, okay. then maybe take a break. And I, I we did, uh, there was another query, um, wasn't there another um, possible query exercise? I think we would have time to, to do that if you if you wanted to. I feel like there was a time permitting one or was, or am I mistaken? No, there definitely is. Um, okay. Let me grab it and see. Cause yeah, I'm certain we're, uh, we will have time. We're to, doing to, all right. To, yeah, we're doing great time-wise. Great. Okay, so first of all, this is the list of properties so that you have it as your reference. Um, this is the, the known universe of our Wikibase, Wikibase Cloud. And then this is a link to the example, uh, another example query. So this is an example where we've used the dimensions visualization to show which headings have been adopted by different institutions. Um, and I have to apologize, Christine, I think you came up with the result here. What were you envisioning um, the activity being, just people playing around with the query? Can't turn decided to fail me right now. But um, yeah, I believe uh, what I envisioned about this was just to either add another property to the query or to uh, play around with the other visualization types. Um, I had picked a visualization type that worked the result so possible. Um, but I, it's, it's a another property see 
it's there. Um, just be aware the data is a little bit thin since this is, um, you know, very much a uh, prototype. Okay, great. Um, you broke up a little bit there, but it sounds like you you chose that visualization type because it worked really well with our model and that people can play around with other visualization types, but they might get unexpected results just because the data that we have is not like totally comprehensive. Okay, great. Correct. Or thin results. That sounds good. Um, so I'll put into chat as well the uh, some documentation about the different views that are available. So let me, I can probably also share my screen here, um, pull up the page. Okay. All right, so we do have um, in the slides, we have an example of a timeline view. Uh, and then in the query, we have, uh, oh, this is cool. Jackie is giving us a tree view in the, in the chat as well. Um, we do have a uh, dimensions view, but those are, of course, not the only ways that you can visualize your data. There's, uh, there are many uh, different view options that will have, um, you know, varying degrees of application for your own wiki base, depending on what types of information um, are in your shape, in your shapes. Uh, so another one that's kind of cool is map. Um, if you have uh, longitude, latitude, population data, there's an awful lot that you can do there. So that's nice if you are, um, you know, wanting to visualize the data you have and not necessarily wanting to do something external in a uh, Jupyter Notebook uh, with Python. There's a lot of things that are built in here too. So similar to the Wikidata query service, there's just, there's a lot, there's so much. Um, there are different ways to visualize things. There's different ways to construct your queries. Um, there's a lot of documentation, thankfully, which is uh, very helpful, but there's also sort of the choice paralysis when you're using these services because there are so many different options. Are there any, any questions about um, the queries that we, we shared or or querying more general more generally. Or just any of the content covered um, earlier in the session. I see a raised hand from Yarmo. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, about setting up the wiki base. Uh, you you started creating from zero, I think. Uh, but now now there's there's an opportunity to use wiki data properties at itself. But is it so that if you start using that, you can't use your own ones? Or can you take some properties from wiki data and then add your own ones? That's that's something I I don't know the answer yet. Um uh, Esther, I can take this one. Um, so uh, the, the short answer is that um, in Wikibase Cloud, there are currently federated properties, which is I think what you're talking about, Yarmo, is, is not enabled. Um, so um, what you can do is map properties uh, and items to Wikidata, but you can't just uh, import all of the um, Wikidata properties as you could. Um, so that was uh, previously an option uh, during WB stack and uh, it was uh, available for Wikibase instances, but uh, in our Wikibase cloud instance, that is not possible uh, right so now. So it's still still manual work. So I would just yep. suggest, if, suggest that if someone wants to do that, I think it would be possible to kind of export uh, by Spark your query some properties from big data and then use open refine and then upload it from open refine to your own wiki base I, I might try something like that yeah and i haven't um uh, yarmo it's interesting um that you bring up the open refine um option um uh because i i personally haven't um tried to do like a like any sort of um property like work with properties and quick statements is is that what you're talking about um like loading properties via quick statements yeah something yeah. like that 
Yeah, because um, yeah, I feel I think that's not possible in Wikidata um, because of uh, the kind of social infrastructure around property proposals. But um, it does uh, quick statements does support batch loading of properties, um, or there's a syntax there. But yeah, we have not tried to do that ourselves. Okay, but it would be interesting. So I think that's something you should you should try yeah yeah because that if someone uh, make a can make a good example for that that would be helpful for many uh, beginners who start using Wikibase. Can, any other questions? All right, if we don't have questions um, right now, um, it's 10.08, so maybe uh, let's maybe take um, and uh, all right, so I'm going to start sharing my screen and get into the, the next sections of our presentation this morning. We should have plenty of time um, to take questions. Um, at the end or throughout actually. So, um, so uh, you know, feel free to drop uh, any questions in the chats um, or, uh, you know, and we'll get to it um, as soon as we can. So our, our next uh, section will focus on um, using quick statements uh, with the Wikibase instance. And of course the Zoom controls are being a little difficult for me. Okay. So, um, so uh, many of you may be familiar with quick statements already from, um, from using it with Wikidata, but I just wanted to briefly uh, introduce quick statements um, uh, for those who may, might not have used it or be familiar with it. Um, so quick statements is a tool that can add and remove statements, labels, descriptions, and aliases from items in a Wikibase instance, uh, including Wikidata. Um, uh, it can add um, statements with optional qualifiers and sources um, as well. And we've talked about that a bit um, uh, in previous uh, portions of this presentation, what a qualifier and what a source is. Um, quick statements can also be used with Wikibase instances and any Wikibase cloud instance has built in support for quick statements. When using quick statements, it's common to generate the data set via spreadsheet editor or open refine, but there are also other ways to use quick statements. So, and I'm gonna go through briefly uh, the syntax of quick statements. Um, and um, basically um, the first row has, um, has uh, column headers um, and I'll talk about those in some detail now. Um, you can see in the example here, um, this is sort of what it looks like in a spreadsheet. I'll, um, although uh, th what I'm specifically gonna be demonstrating is using uh, quick statements with CSV um, and we will need the raw CSV data, which is often rendered as a spreadsheet, um, uh, you know, in Word, LibreOffice, OpenOffice, Google Sheets. Um, this is often what what you display you see if you're um, working with a CSV file. So the uh, first row um, uh, and the first, um, really the first um, column and the first row needs to specify the QID. Um, and the QID is the Q number of the item being edited. If you leave that row blank, or there's, if you leave that uh, value blank for a given row, then the, um, the, um, uh, that basically tells uh, quick statements to create a new item. Um, and then um, the, other, the other main um, elements that uh, are often uh, added in uh, um, a quick statements uh, spreadsheets or CSV are three, um, 
three columns. So label, description, and alias. So L for label, D for description, and A for alias, um, plus a two-letter two language code. So um, in our example here, we have um, a, a preferred label for the item in English. So the, e so the capital L stands for label, and then the EN um, stands for uh, English as a language. Um, and um, that construction, uh, uh, again, uh, carries through for descriptions and aliases, which are alternate labels. Um, so it's basically, uh, you know, you just add the two letter language code. You could add multiple um, preferred labels in different languages, as well as descriptions in different languages um, and alternate labels and or aliases in other languages in a single um, batch upload if you wanted. Um, but uh, just for the sake of simplicity, uh, since we're trying to cover a lot of ground in this demonstration, we're, we're just keeping it pretty simple and just uh, adding or updating English uh, preferred labels. Um, then uh, commonly you also include statements in the form of P columns. So the P columns just have the P number of the property and then the value. Um, so in this case, uh, what essentially this first row is saying is um, we have an item uh, with the uh, with the identifier Q36. We want to set the uh, English language label for that as officials and employees um, undocumented. Um, and then this is an instance of a um, an external label. Um, and it is from the Library of Congress subject heading. So it's actually probably officials and employees alien um, from the older LCSH. Um, again, a lot of our, a lot of our uh, data that we originally compiled for our Wikibase Cloud instance was um, uh, compiled before LCSH made changes to some of the, uh, some of the um, uh, headings for illegal Im immigration and immigrants. Um, or undocumented immigration and immigrants. Um, so uh, in our Wikibase instance, again, uh, Q14 is um, an external label and Q2 is Library of Congress subject headings. Um, if you wanted to be a bit more advanced or um, include some more complex contents, um, you can also add sources to your statements um, and uh, qualifiers. So sources, um, are specified by a capital S, um, and then uh, you include the uh, property number minus the P. So rather than a capital P, which would create a statement, um, you drop the P, but then include the rest of the number. So an example would be uh, for like a reference URL, I think that's like P279 in Wikidata, you would, if you wanted to make a reference URL source so like to of uh, where you're getting this information from you would do like s179 and then uh put in a url as the value of that source uh, likewise if you wanted to add a qualifier to a statement um you would do a lowercase q um, plus the property number minus the p so it's the same type of syntax and the examples we gave um uh earlier in the presentation had to do with uh adding start dates and end dates um, to a statement. So an example of that would be, um, you know, Columbia University Live, um, or sorry, I should say, uh, the preferred local label undocumented immigration um, was has been used by Columbia. So the statement would be a uh, label uh, undocumented immigration used by is the, the, the predicates. And then the object is uh, Columbia University Libraries. The qualifier would be a start date of January 2021. Um, so, uh, so then you would have the queue with the start date number or the number of this property for start dates um, as a qualifier. Again, we're trying to keep this demo relatively straightforward. So we're not adding this type of complex um, content um, to our quick statements um, example, but uh, just know that it's possible. It's also possible to remove a statement um, via quick statements. And in this case, you would uh, uh, preface the P number in the column header with a negative sign or a dash to remove a specific statement from uh, that item in your Wikibase instance. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna 
now jump into the live demo. And um, so I'm gonna leave the slide deck and uh, let me, we go to uh, actually to, I'm gonna close this out. I'm gonna reduce the size of this because the um, the Zoom controls are currently kind of blocking um, my view. So I wanna also note that for the next couple of sections, so this GitHub page um, that we've set up for this demo, uh, and I'm going to drop the link into the um, into the into the chat here to the to the GitHub. Uh, oh, sorry, this um, that thumbs up was not intended to be part of it, so I'm going to just reshare it. Um, so, uh, at any rate, we're now in the section on uh, quick statements. Um, so, if you wanted to get into a little bit more detail uh, about uh, quick statements um, and the syntax that's used for both CSV uh, data entry and for uh, uh, what they call the command sequence, um, there is this helpful uh, quick statements uh, uh, help page. Um, and it goes into great detail about how you use quick statements. Um, so uh, and I don't have time to get into all of the ins and outs of using quick statements. It would be a full multi-hour workshop. But uh, if you're interested in finding out more about what, you, what else you can do with quick statements, uh, I would refer you to this page. Um, and then um, if you'd like to follow along at least or look at the data, uh, being used in this demo. So I've included a link um, to uh, the CSV um, that I'm using. And uh, essentially, uh, uh, this is not in the spreadsheet view format that uh, I had a screenshots um, of in the slide deck. Um, and uh, that's kind of important because um, as we'll see shortly, um, you, uh, if you were to try to copy that in, uh, it wouldn't really work uh, in the um, in the quick statements interface in Wikibase. So I'm going to go to the main page of our Wikibase cloud instance, and uh, so any Wikibase cloud instance uh, will have quick statements available right here on the lower left hand corner. And when you uh, first arrive, um, you might have to log in and. Um, Hopefully, it will let us do that. So before I before I get to that point with the login, um, I'm going to just copy all of this and then go back here. And uh, since I'm logged into our Wikibase Cloud instance already, it should just be a click through. Um, Perhaps the first time you do this, it might require uh, you to actually manually log in, but uh, I've done this a couple of times now. <coughs> oh, pardon me. And uh, so it, it generally is just a quick little uh, click through. And you see here that um, I now, my username appears, so I'm logged in and ready to go. Um, and so once I'm here, I wanna click new batch, and then I'm gonna just, um, you can um, create a, um, uh, a named batch if you want to um, by just, you know, kind of filling in a name. And then um, since we're gonna do, uh, you see that you have a few different options here. Um, you can uh, import uh, CSV commands or V1 commands. We're gonna be doing CSV commands. Um, I decided to do that since um, I feel like most folks have probably encountered CSV files uh, and are at least familiar with what they are. Um, whereas um, the commands, um, the quick statements command is uh, a sort of a specialized format that might be a little bit newer difference um, to people. So I, you know, I, I, for me, it's just easier to use the CSV formats when I'm uh, doing a batch of quick statements. Um, so I'm gonna not load in all of these because it just will take too long for the demo. Um, so I'm gonna, I know that I have, 
we'll do a, a sort of a small subset of about five or so terms. I think um, I think that these are all, yeah, these should not be in there um, as of a couple of days ago. Um, so you'll see that um, as with the screenshot in the, in the um, slide deck, uh, our first column is the, the Q number and we see that it's blank for all of these terms. So we're creating new terms. Um, and then we have a label in English, uh, an instance of property and a source vocabulary property. So these are instances of external terms uh, from uh, Q2, which is Library of Congress subject headings. So we're gonna then click import CSC commands. And you're taken to a preview screen. Um, and it basically says, uh, you know, we're gonna create five items, which is great. That's what we wanna do. And for each item, we're gonna have two statements. Um, so instance of external label and source vocabulary library of Congress subject headings. <clears throat> so if this all looks good, like this is essentially what you were intending your batch to do, you can click run which I'm going to do because this data is in, not in my in, in the Wikibase Cloud instance yet. It's probably going to take a little while to, uh, to run. So um, while that's uh, happening in the background, um, I'm going to go back to the slide deck and uh, So we've covered all this. Um, so I'll just note briefly while that's running, um, this demo has shown how to use quick statements via CSV file. Um, but if you needed to do some more complex updates, um, you might have to explore um, the uh, import commands option, which would use the raw quick statements. You can, you can actually um, still use a spreadsheet program to, to generate uh, quick statements um, in the command form. And there's some information on that documentation page about how to do that. Uh, OpenRefine will also uh, output quick statements um, commands. Um, there's a built-in option to the, you know, the last several versions of OpenRefine uh, that will um, export quick statements. So that is also an option. Um, for folks. And as Yarmo noted as well, uh, one thing that's kind of interesting about working in a Wikibase instance is you can actually use quick statements to load properties in batches, or at least that's my understanding that it's possible. I've not personally tried doing that uh, in our Wikibase instance, but it is uh, intriguing uh, since it could very much save a lot of time uh, in terms of uh, you know, uh, if you have, um, you know, a couple dozen properties to start off your Wikibase instance that you've got all mapped out, it would certainly be a lot quicker to import those in a batch uh, via quick statements rather than, um, rather than uh, creating them all manually by hand. So let's go in back and um, see how our batch is progressing. And it looks like, yeah, they're all done. So uh, once they are um, created, uh, we can, uh, from, the, from, the, uh, from the screen here, uh, from the preview screen, um, click on the item. And then we see that uh, we're brought to our Wikibase instance, our Wikibase Cloud instance. Um, and we see that we have an item with a queue number in two statements. So uh, external label and uh, uh, source vocabulary library of Congress. Um, so uh, we could have added more statements uh, and uh, added, you know, sources and, uh, or sorry, references and qualifiers to these statements if we wanted to. But again, I was trying to just keep this demo pretty, pretty light and easy. So um, I decided not to get too convoluted uh, since I wanted this to uh, appeal to beginners as well as uh, people who have worked with quick statements before. All right, so any questions about using quick statements with the Wikibase instance? All right, and it looks like we're doing pretty well for time. So I'm gonna get into the uh, final portion, which is gonna cover um, working uh, with OpenRefine in a, in a Wikibase instance, so. And I'm gonna start off um, this demonstration of working with OpenRefine um, in a Wikibase instance um, 
uh, by pointing to a number of resources. So there's uh, a section in the Open Refine User Manual on uh, reconciling uh, um, uh, data with a with it, wiki based instances in Open Refine. Um, and that certainly is a very helpful resource if you're trying to set up a reconciliation service for your own wiki based instance. Um, now, the second link, and um, I should note that all of these links are also available on the GitHub page uh, that we've sent out a few times in the chats, um, uh, is the uh, actual reconciliation interface that uh, you'll have to download or uh, clone from GitHub um, if you want to set up your own, you know, customize it and set it up to work with a wiki-based instance. Um, this uh, third link is to Docker Desktop, which um, I will be using today to get the uh, reconciliation service running. Uh, you don't have to use Docker Desktop, but it does make things a little bit easier, um, at least for me, uh, since I'm not uh, that uh, technically savvy with some of uh, some of these uh, uh, um, issues of you know kind of hosting something on a server. Um, uh, and I included also a few presentations on the topic of uh, using uh, OpenRefine or setting up an OpenRefine reconciliation service to work with a, a, a wiki-based instance. Um, so Jim Hahn, who's one of the conveners of this group but um, is not able to be here today, uh, has a presentation on this topic, which was very helpful to me uh, for setting up today's demo. Um, and then there are two presentations from the um, TIB, which is a European um, uh, organization on uh, using um, uh, open refined reconciliation services with Wikibase instances. Uh, finally, there's a link to uh, Wikibase manifests for um, use with the open refine data extension. We're going to look at that briefly at the end of the demo today, but um, uh, I'll talk about um, some issues with that right now if, you're, um, if your reconciliation service isn't hosted uh, on a web server. All right. So, um, and uh, so I, I would like to apologize to participants. We had intended this to be a bit more of an active participation um, uh, element of the uh, of today's workshop, but because our wiki-based cloud instance was um, suddenly uh, being migrated, uh, uh, and we did uh, we didn't get a lot of advanced warning, um, uh, we. Uh, I've, this is going to be more of a demo than an active participation. So we had intended originally to send out an email with um, information about downloading Docker Desktop, but we really weren't sure that we were even going to be able to demo this um, with our new Wikibase Cloud instance until um, kind of the beginning of last week. So we just decided to keep it as a demo. Um, so if you do have Docker Desktop, feel free to follow along with this, um, or you can try to download Docker Desktop. Again, all the links are on our GitHub page. and. I'll just go back um, to the GitHub page um, and and point it out. So we've got the Docker desktop and um, all that stuff. And then um, as I proceed through the demo, there's some commands you can copy if you are following along. But um, you know, we'll talk about that once I'm once I'm there. So um, I'm going to go in to my Docker desktop right now. So if you have Docker Desktop um, set up, um, uh, Jim Han also, so if you go to our project page, um, I, should, I, should, I should note before I get into this demo that, um, I'm sorry, Docker's being a little weird. Um, uh, so I'll point everyone also to our project page because, um, there was a, uh, Jim Han has given at least uh, one or two uh, presentations uh, that go into great detail about uh, what Docker Desktop is and um, how you can use it with Wikibase. Um, so I'm not going to cover all that ground, uh, in part also because I'm not as um, well versed in all of the ins and outs of Docker as Jim is. But if you are curious about what Docker is um, and um, how it works, I would really recommend um, that you view the recording of Jim's presentation, uh, which talks about um, how you can use Docker to set up a wiki-based instance um, just on your own 
home computer or laptop. Um, and he goes into, again, great detail about um, what's going on behind the scenes in Docker. So, and then, so yeah, so this is sort of the, the basic Docker interface. Um, uh, so once you download Docker Desktop, it looks like this. Um, to, uh, in order to uh, get the, um, the actual reconciliation service, I'm gonna open up a terminal. Um, if you're on a Mac, you'll want the terminal. If you uh, are on a Windows uh, machine, you would want the command prompt. And I'm just gonna navigate to a directory um, that I have ready access to. So I have a, um, a work folder on my computer um, that I think is still labeled, um, yes, a WB stack because until like a couple of weeks ago, we were still doing all this work in WB stack. So once I'm there, um, I'm gonna go back to the GitHub page and um, and I'm gonna just copy this, um, this command. Um, so this basically uh, is just telling the, telling my, um, computer to uh, go to this um, this page in GitHub and download the contents of that GitHub repository. You can also manually go to the GitHub repository just by uh, you know copying that URL into a browser and uh, downloading it all to your computer. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to do it through the terminal. All right, so um, that seems to have basically worked um, uh, with no issues, um, which is great. Um, and it was relatively fast, which is uh, which is uh, kind of uh, not always the case when I'm in a uh, in a Zoom. Sometimes things uh, will take a long time to download. So um, what's happened um, is. Again, that's just been um, downloaded into this directory. And so now I have this new folder that's full of stuff. Uh, it's called Open Refine Wikibase. So to get the reconciliation service up and running, I want to navigate in the terminal um, to that folder. So it's just Open Refine. And then uh, I'm going to run a basic Docker commands, um, or uh, yeah, basic commands to get the Docker up and running. Um, so it's this right here, Docker Compose Up. Um, I note in the slides that um, for certain computers, you might need to um, do a version of this command that asks for a password. So in my case, I will actually do that because um, I just find it works better sometimes for me. Um, but it should work, uh, just the basic command should work by itself and, and Okay, and, um, oh, hold on, something is going wrong. Let me try that again. Um, Oh, huh, I'm getting some errors. So um, I might want to start from scratch. Um, let me close Docker. And I'm going to delete that. I, di I did record a version of this, this demo yesterday. So if this doesn't work, um, I will just pull up that video. Um, it did work yesterday. But um, this is always the, the challenge of live demos. And thankfully, we have uh, plenty of time. Um, so I'm going to move that to the trash and uh, close this out. So I'm going to go back here. And let me empty my trash too. Um. 
Okay, so I think this works. Hmm. All right, this is failing again. Um, all right, I'm gonna go into my video uh, and just uh, take it from there. Oh, maybe it's because I don't have Docker running. Um, let me get Docker going again. Oh yeah, that is why it's not working. Um, sorry about that. Docker always takes a little while to get going. Um, hmm. Okay, so I seem to be having some issue with my Docker installation today. Um, so I'm resetting to factory defaults. Um, uh, this is always... Uh, Worst nightmare uh, when we're doing a live demo. Uh, so it's still starting. Hopefully, um, we'll get through this. Uh, Almost inevitable. So you you took the you took the bullet, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So far, it's some. and um, we still have over an hour. So I, I can definitely always if it doesn't um, work after it restarts after Docker restarts here, then. Um, I will just uh, pull up my video from that I recorded yesterday because I had a feeling something like this was going to happen. Hmm. And it seems like Docker is taking quite a long time to, to start. So um, I'm trying to think uh, maybe what can we do while, while I'm waiting for Docker to uh, recover? Uh, let's maybe. Uh, Maybe we can go into the slide deck. Does anyone have any questions so far, actually? Um, this might be a good time to take questions. Feel free to drop them in the chat or unmute. And this is taking way too long, so I'm going to just restart it. Okay, so I'm just going to go into the video, I think, from yesterday, since it's the same idea. Okay, um, so I will um, 
here now. That's where the, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. So I think this is about where I would have been in the demo. Um, if I have to go, um, all of this work was done via WB stack. So I still haven't renamed my directory to Wikibase yes. Cloud. So let me just type that in. So and can everyone hear the audio of the, the recording? Yes. Okay. All right. Great. I saved that to my legacy WB stack directory. Okay, and then um, I'm gonna, not exactly cheat, but I'm gonna go here and grab this uh, this command uh, from my GitHub page. Uh, it's, it's just uh, basically all that a git clone command does is uh, download something into a directory. Okay. And then we'll see that it's moving right along. Uh-oh. Okay. Oops. Okay. So let's try that download. Okay, that worked. For some reason, the first time it worked didn't quite work, but uh, the second time it seemed to have worked. Uh, so I'm going to go now into, um, we can go back and look at this. So we see that we have, um, we have the reconciliation services has been added now. <clears throat> so what I want to do now is rename I know I realize now what I did wrong in the demo. So if I can get Docker going back up, I will do it. I, I forgot a step. So I apologies for this uh, for this long uh, digression. Um, oh uh, yes, let me go in. I'm going to stop that recording and we'll go back to the live demo. All right, and I still have, um, I should still have uh, the reconciliation service. Okay, so what I, the step I forgot, which I I did this before a long time ago, I forgot to uh, uh, set up the config file. Um, so that's why it wasn't working. Um, and so the config file is basically, um, uh, where you specify what the uh, UR, URL um, is and some other parameters for your local Wikibase instance. Um, so at any rate, um, uh, you see here that uh, out of the box, the, uh, the reconciliation service um, for any Wikibase instance that we downloaded uh, comes uh, preloaded with information for Wikidata. So what we have to do is actually go in and um, change a lot of these parameters to reflect our own Wikibase instance, um, in our case, a Wikibase Cloud instance. Um, so if I go back to the GitHub page, um, uh, here is a sample config file. Um, so I'm gonna just um, point out a couple of things. So you see that, um, here, instead of wikidata.org, we've got our Wikibase Cloud instance um, right here, uh, rather than, um, you know, Wikidata uh, is uh, um, in the parameter. So, um, and you see that that kind of carries on down um, throughout the document. I will note that um, I'm not, um, I've probably said this a few times already, I'm not the most uh, tech savvy person when it comes to, you know, managing um, applications and servers and things like that. Um, so I will say that the first time I tried to set this up, I did try to um, update every single parameter to reflect um, our Wikibase Cloud, um, or at the time it was WB Stack instance. Um, and it wasn't working correctly for some reason. Um, 
And uh, so I reached out to Jim Hahn, who's one of the conveners of this group. Um, and since he had set up his own um, uh, reconciliation service for a wiki base instance he was working with, and I noticed that he did not bother to change all of the parameters. So some of them are still reflecting wiki data. Um, one thing uh, we will notice is that when we run the, the sample reconciliation, you will see that there are some there's some branding that is specific to wiki data um, and some other quirks like that, which uh, this config file could um, would be where you would fix that. But um, this is just to say that. Um, you know, there may be some additional um, things that could be uh, improved upon in this sample file, but this will get the reconciliation service up and running. So, um, you know, um, sometimes uh, the you don't want the perfect to be the enemy of the good. <laughs> um, so, um, so when I was trying to get everything, you know, perfect, it wasn't working for whatever reason, and uh, this seems to work. So I'm gonna stick with that. So. Um, so basically, uh, before I do, um, you know, edit the file, I actually want to rename it just to config.py. So I'm going to just copy everything, delete it, and then paste in the contents um, from the sample file and then save it. And then I'm going to go back to my terminal and then I'm going to try that and try that command again. I'm gonna make sure that Docker, oh God, Docker is not working. So this might actually not work because uh, Docker is having a bit of a meltdown. <laughs> uh, Docker desktop is waiting. Um, containers. So let me give Docker another minute to recover. We can always go back to that video um, if we need to. We're doing still okay on time. It's, it's good that we built in a little extra time. Uh, so before um, before you run the you know the final command to get this up to get this running, uh, you do need to have Docker going, and um, I might actually stop my share briefly to allow that to happen. Um, I'm not sure why Docker is being so difficult right now, but um, so it so it so it is. So not much I can do about it. Um, seems to be kind of stuck on a loop. And I might actually go in here and go to a force quit and see if I can make it force quit. Well, it's apparently not actually working, so. Yeah, Zoom does tend to make Docker run slower, but I think also this, that I'm basically, um, click that option to restart it from factory defaults um, might have slowed it down a bit. So let's give it like one minute and see if the Docker will start running. If not, um, I will just return to that recording, which is a much smoother, much smoother demo than uh, what I'm currently offering. Okay, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna leave this because Docker is not cooperating with me and I will go back to that recording. Um, actually, is it still up? Let's see. Um, so I'm gonna just grab all of this text and copy and paste it basically, or I could download it and replace it in that directory, but it's not a huge file. So this won't take too long, I hope.
And um, it's not necessary to have everything filled out or, you know, kind of correctly um, pointing uh, to uh, to uh, your wiki base instance to get this to work. Um, I was having actually, uh, when we were in the WB stack uh, environment, I was having some issues uh, with getting this to work. And uh, Jim Han shared with me his config pi dot pi, pi file for one of his wiki, wiki base instances. And I noticed that he had not changed a lot of parameters that I had attempted to change. So um, there's definitely in this sample file some things that probably could be updated, but um, uh, to reflect our wiki base instance, but uh, we're just going to avoid that right now because I know that this works. So I've saved this um, and I will just confirm by reopening it. Um, all right, yep, that seems to be working. So now I'm going to just go into the um, to the uh, reconciliation service folder that I have uh, downloaded from GitHub. Um, and the name of it is OpenRefine Wikibase. So now we're there. And then um, we're just gonna run a basic Docker command and uh, going back to our GitHub page, it's right here. So it's Docker Compose up. Um, I have a note in the slides too that um, depending on your system, your system setup, you might have to uh, do a um, a slight modification of this um, uh, that requests a password login. Um, I'm going to do that here just because sometimes that um, that works better on my uh, MacBook whatever reason. Um, so I'll put that in and then I'm going to put in my password. And then the terminal is going to start working. Um, and what's going to happen is basically the um, this is instructing Docker to create the um, the containers <coughs> of the um, of the reconciliation service. And if we go back to Docker, we see that we have uh, two containers or one it's sort of one one unit with two containers that are running right now. And um, I Jim Hung has has given a presentation actually I think a couple of times now for our Wikibase working hour uh, that goes into great detail about Docker and um, what these you know what's going on here with the containers. Um, for the interest of time, I'm going to skip that. And also, um, conveniently, I'm not that well versed in Docker and how all of this works. So I'm probably not the most uh, qualified person to to uh, <laughs> discuss all what's going on here. But essentially, uh, the, they are running um, the containers. And that means that our reconciliation service should be running as well. Um, so I'm going to go back to um, the terminal and just uh, note here that um, it's basically uh, this is saying that our uh, reconciliation service is running uh, locally. Um, that's what those four zeros are at port 8000. And if we go back to um, to this uh, GitHub page, um, I'm going to control click on this and open it in a new tab. And uh, so if you are following along at home um, and want to want to, you know, just make sure that this is working, um, you should be able to enter in the URL localhost colon 8000 and get, uh, you know, a nice HTML display. Um, this is just a documentation page, um, but it does, you know, show that um, basically a link to our instance um, and uh, it gives you the uh, URI or the URL of the reconciliation service that you'll want to put into OpenRefine. And so if we click on this, we do in fact see that um, that we are at our <coughs> our Wikibase instance or Wikibase Cloud instance. I'm pretty, I thought I had. So 
Um, yeah, this is a term that we put in during our quick statements um, demo. So at any rate, I'm going to take us now into Open Refine. Uh, apologies, this is a project that I'm working on for my day job and my currently my Open Refine instance is running very slow. Um, so that's one reason why I wanted to record this, just in case I needed to zip through um, some of the slow loading of uh, things like quick statements in the Open Refine reconciliation interface. Okay, while that's loading, I'm actually going to go back to GitHub. And um, if you'd like to follow along with this, um, there's a data set <coughs> that you can download um, here. Um, it's just a CSV file. So um, basically, I already have it downloaded. Um, and whenever, whenever our uh, my Open Refine instance gets gets running, um, we can check it out. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna create a project. In open refine and um, so it'll take a little bit to get going. Um, you can see that the data set is, is indeed loaded here. Um, there's some quirkiness. I've since cleaned up this data set a little bit, but um, essentially, uh, something I'll show. if we wanted to check and see what um, which of these, uh, I'm going to do the institutions because there's fewer of them in there, so it'll be quicker for the sake of this demo. So I'm going to go in and uh, into the reconciliation um, module and click Start Reconciling. And I want to go on and click Enter Standard Service. And again, I'm going to point us to the uh, GitHub page. Um, and that has the, uh, the URL that you'll want to paste in. Note that this won't work if your reconciliation service isn't up and running. Okay, great. So um, we see that it we added the standard service and it has indeed um, um, it has indeed started uh, to recognize that uh, these entities in this column are in fact institutions. So I'm going to click Start Reconciling, and then um, it, the reconciliation service will start running. Um, and since I picked something where there are literally just three values, uh, this, it's not too surprising that this worked pretty quick. Um, and hovering over them, um, we see that um, we get a kind of a nice preview of the item in a hyperlink that will take us to the item, to my home institution, Columbia University Libraries, um, uh, with some aliases and everything like that in our Wikibase Cloud instance. So that's great. Um, there are some things that um, <coughs> are a little bit goofy. Like we could, obviously, having this Wikidata graphic is a little confusing. You could replace that in the config file, uh, but. Um, I'm just uh, kind of trying to do things incrementally. So that's a nice nice thing to have, but it's not uh, mission critical for us right now. So we have not tried to do that. Um, the other institutions, um, we, we have our Harvard and the cataloging lab, and it, they have all been automatically matched. Um, we could reconcile these other columns, but in the interest of brevity, I'm just going to uh, skip over that. And uh, I will go in, though, and do a couple of things um, with Open Refine. So I'm going to add a column based on this column to get the, um, the Q number.
our Wikibase instance. So, uh, and many of you may have done this with Wikidata or with um, other like Getty vocabularies or Library of Congress vocabularies if you've done reconciliation in OpenRefine against those. Um, so I'm gonna get the ID. Um, if I wanted to get, be really fancy and get the URL, um, we could do something like this. Um, where you would get the full URL, but uh, I'm just gonna keep it simple to the simple command cell.recon.match.id. And uh, there you go. So you have your IDs now from your Wikibase instance. Um, and if you, um, let's say that um, this data set would use CUL instead of um, Columbia, the full Columbia University libraries and return to match, but you wanted that official um, string from the Wikibase instance, uh, we could do a similar process um, where we where we grab that uh, preferred label from our Wikibase instance. And you'll see that there's no difference here, but um, if, you know, again, if we had used CUL instead of Columbia University Libraries, um, it would grab the preferred label of Columbia University Libraries. All right, so, so that's, that's kind of it for um, the setting up the basic reconciliation service that fetches the labels and the queue numbers. But many of you might have used this, um, this uh, Wikidata extension before. So, uh, and, but you might not have noticed that you can um, add other Wikibase instances uh, through this interface. Um, and so in theory, it's possible to add your own Wikibase instance um, to this. And the way that you would do that is via um, a, um, what they call a manifest file. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that party or get that, um, get that going um, and I'll note here that our sample JSON manifest um, is available right here. I'm gonna grab this. Uh, we'll have to So basically yeah if you just click here um, and if we wanted to, For the sake of um, demonstration, just look at this. Um, so basically, what this does right now, the default schema is Wikidata, and I'm gonna. This is always a little bit, uh, a little bit wonky. Oh, uh, yeah, it wants only columns that have been reconciled. So, to Wiki Wikidata. So. Uh, We could do that really quick because uh, it probably won't take too long. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do that wiki data reconciliation, and then we'll look at our schema. Um, the reason I'm doing this with wiki data right now. <laughs> Is because is for a couple of reasons. Um, uh, essentially, um, the uh, since our reconciliation service isn't hosted on a web server, it won't actually work uh, with um, this kind of schema extension. So I'm just kind of demonstrating this to show. So now, essentially, uh, we do have a workable. Uh, basis to create a schema. Um, so I'm going to make a very basic schema here, which just says, um, which adds a label um, to uh, Wikidata. And then you can add statements. But since we don't have any other <coughs> columns reconciled in, in Wiki, 
in Wikidata, it won't let us actually do it, but this is basically what the interface is like. Um, so you can add multiple statements, which would then, um, uh, along with like qualifiers and uh, sources um, and, um, you know, uh, make uh, some a pretty complex um, data sets uh, that could be added to um, Wikidata. So you could create new items if, um, if they aren't present in Wikidata, or you could add statements um, to existing items in Wikidata. Um, so I'm going to discard the changes and um, move into the demonstration of our uh, adding your own Wikibase instance. Uh, so you, and I should have talked while I did that. So, so basically, you're going to go up to the top where it says Wikidata and click Select Wikibase Instance. Um, and then in the pop-up that shows up, then you're going to click Add Wikibase, and it will request that you paste in a manifest file. Um, and um, I added a, a kind of a JSON comment to this uh, example that the URL of our reconciliation endpoint um, is not actually going to work. Um, we'll get an error, even though this is uh, sort of a web address. Um, it doesn't seem to, uh, this interface doesn't seem to accept it. So uh, I'll click add Wikibase and it says manifestation reconciliation endpoint should match format URL. So I'm just going to put in um, another reconciliation service um, that actually came with the sample manifest that I was using. And it will let us, um, it will let us basically add the instance. And then if you want to, if you want to toggle between instance, so right now we've selected wiki data as our instance, I'm going to click on uh, our instance. Um, it will throw an error, but it will sort of allow us to um, to make a schema. So if we would click add item, <coughs> um, you can start dragging stuff, but um, yeah, it doesn't really work. Um, uh, I've had some limited success uh, doing a couple of other hacks, like getting it at least to allow me to start making some statements. But um, essentially, it doesn't work unless your reconciliation service is actually hosted on a web server, uh, like an accessible web server, and not just on your Docker desktop uh, on your uh, on your laptop or your desktop or your local computer, whatever that may be. But um, this is just to say that uh, there's a lot of possibility there and a lot you could do. Um, so if you are savvy enough to get your reconciliation service hosted on a web server, um, then you can absolutely set this up and then use OpenRefine to, um, to start uh, doing batch additions and edits to your Wikibase instance, which is great because probably uh, like you know, probably a lot of you are already using OpenRefine or are familiar with it somehow. And uh, it's a really great tool just for cleaning up data and for, you know, getting your URIs and everything together. Um, so I'm going to continue the this demonstration, though, by uh, doing one more thing. So going back to the I'm going to add one more column. And I'll just grab that Wikidata number. Um, so this kind of segues, segues us nicely into uh, the last segment of, the, of our talk today, which is focuses mostly on um, just ways that you can use your Wikibase instance to work with wiki data. And uh, using OpenRefine is a great way. So you see that um, I have uh, reconciled both uh, the same data, basically, from my local Wikibase instance to, uh, to wiki data. So um, using this, like essentially, you can, since we have the wiki data queue number, you could really go in and grab other um, Uh, you could grab other uh, data from Wikidata pretty easily here. And uh, 
Hmm. It's been a while since I've actually done this, so uh, I don't. I'm a little bit uh, verklempt right now, but uh, yeah, you can you can essentially go in and um, the columns from reconciled values. So basically, yeah, we could go in through this interface and um, you know, let's say we wanted to get the parent organization. Or let's get this. This is more likely. Um, so we could go in and get uh, just the information that you know Harvard Library is in Massachusetts. Um, apparently, that's that information is not available for um, Columbia, which is interesting. So maybe that's something uh, we might want to do. Uh, we could grab the official website, which appears to be present for both library systems. Um, so there's a lot. So like once you uh, reconcile your own data, it's wiki data, you can go in and get all of the, you know, you can enrich your own wiki base with uh, data pulled from wiki, wiki data, but you could also go the other way pretty easily and, you know, uh, take your data, match it to wiki data, and then add stuff from your wiki base to wiki data via OpenRefine. So I'm going to stop that. And then um, going back into the slide deck, um, and I need to scroll on up a, quite a bit. Um, I should have noted actually before I um, went into the JSON manifest section that um, actually if we look at Docker desktop, um, basically, uh, now that we've set set this up in Docker, rather than going into the terminal every time you want to start your reconciliation service, um, you could just um, you could just uh, open up Docker and essentially uh, I'm going to stop this container right now, and then um, just click uh, this play button and that starts your reconciliation service up. And um, so once it's set up, it's actually pretty easy um, if you have Docker. Um, other ways that you could do it without Docker um, uh, basically it would involve um, uh, there's a you could invoke a simple Python script. Um, I've done that for other reconciliation services, but um, again, for in the interest of time, um, we're, I don't want to get into uh, all of the ins and outs of ways you might want to might be able to do that. But with Docker Desktop, it is actually pretty easy to just get this up and running without having to know a whole lot of uh, technical information. Um, so, <clears throat> so um, another, all right. And um, so I'm gonna stop the record, showing the recording. Um, is everyone still with me? Yes. Okay. Great. So I'm going to go back into the slide deck um, and close out the session um, with just a few uh, few final final thoughts about uh, using um, your wiki days with wiki data. Um, so um, so another technique uh, or another functionality uh, where you can um, work with uh, um, uh, relating your data sets in your wiki base to wiki data, and I should probably start from the beginning, um, is if you're the administrator of your uh, wiki base cloud instance, and I believe these features exist, um, or there's a functionality in, in um, uh, the wiki base, uh, in, like standalone wiki base instance as well that um, allows for this. Um, you can uh, set up mappings to, um, to uh, items and properties. Uh, in uh, from the, in that point from your uh, Wikibase instance to Wikidata. So I'm gonna um, just click here. So this is our instance. I have three Wikibase instances in the Wikibase Cloud. One is uh, from last year's LD4 conference. Uh, we did a kind of a, a 
a live uh, a live editing uh, events, which was fun. Um, at any rate, um, uh, so um, you don't have a lot of uh, there aren't a lot of things that you can customize in uh, as an admin of a wiki based cloud instance, but um, uh, one thing that is nice um, is uh, again these mappings. So it's it's pretty simple. It's um, just uh, you basically just point um, like for example our instance of property is p1 and in Wikidata that's p31. And I believe that this works uh, most effectively when you're talking about um, using the query service, um, which we discussed earlier. So we'll loop on back to that. Um, and uh, let me go back into the slides here. Um, so, so going here, and uh, if you want to follow along, um, um, I should. I, in, in Yarmo asked earlier about federated properties. So currently, they are not supported in Wikibase Cloud. Essentially, federated properties um, uh, is uh, a feature that was rolled out, I think, in 2019, which enabled Wikibase instances to use um, uh, properties um, from Wikidata. Um, as it stood at the time, and I think as this may still be the case, it was kind of an all or nothing. So you could either use um, uh, all of the Wikidata properties, um, uh, but you were not allowed to, to make any custom properties. Um, so you know that might or might not match your use case, but um, this is not currently supported in Wikibase Cloud. Um, so it may be supported in the future. I'm not sure what the status of it is though. Um, but to speak of the mappings, um, Jackie uh, Xie, who is uh, one of the conveners of the group, uh, made a made a nice query, um, a nice sample query, and um, this is available on the GitHub. I will drop it into the chat though too. Um, oops. Um, hold on. Uh, it's taking a little bit of time. But uh, let me go on and um, drop this into the chats for everyone. Okay, so um, so basically, what's happening with this query is that it's a federated query. <clears throat> and I believe it's taking advantage of the mapping feature um, in our Wikibase uh, cloud instance. Um, so basically pull together data both from our Wikibase instance and from our um, from uh, from Wikidata. So the first uh, four columns are the uh, URIs and labels from our from our Wikibase cloud instance. But uh, we don't currently have any of the uh, Library of Congress subject heading identifiers in our Wiki, Wikibase cloud instance. So Jackie has gone and pulled those in from Wikidata, which is great, along with the, um, the LC um, authorized version of the term. So it's, it's, it's interesting to kind of see all this data together. Um, if you wanted to, um, to look behind the scenes of this query from the link that I dropped in, you could, uh, click edit sparkle um, by, you know, kind of hovering over the right hand and then you can look at the sparkle. And I'm sure Jackie um, will be happy to answer any questions you might have about this. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's really neat uh, just pulling together like your local data with Wikidata and how easy it can be to do that. Um, so going back into our slideshow, um, so um, yeah, I covered the mappings and we talked already about how you can use OpenRefine to uh, kind of bring your Wikibase, your data from your Wikibase into play with um, Wikidata. Um, uh, so, and that can uh, kind of go in many, in two directions. You know, you can uh, grab data from Wikidata and bring it into your Wikibase, but you can also um, easily via OpenRefine uh, take your, your uh, local data from your, your own Wikibase and add it to Wikidata. All right, um, so that concludes our session for today. Um, and um, I just wanted to end with a call out uh, to say that we are interested in, in um, uh, uh, inviting uh, 
people to join the planning group. So if you'd like to help out, please email um, this email address. So ld4-wikidata.coordin at googlegroups.com if you're interested in helping uh, plan future wiki-based working hours. Um, uh, we've been, the current group has been uh, doing this for over a year now. So um, we are interested in kind of uh, allowing folks to rotate off and bringing new people on. So. Um, Please, if you uh, and you don't have to be very experienced with uh, Wikibase, uh, but if you're just interested, it's a great way to learn more. And uh, certainly, not all of us are experts in in Wikibase, so uh, don't let uh, lack of technical um, know-how uh, be a barrier if it's something that's interesting to you. All right, and uh, Jackie has raised raised her hand, so if feel free to unmute. Um, thank you, Ryan. This is very helpful. If you wouldn't mind, go to the Sparkle query for the federated uh, exercise that um, you have on the browser, not the slide deck. Mm -hmm. I think you still have it there. Um, and it has the syntax of the Sparkle query. What I wanted to point out is that in the, in the event of other Sparkle queries endpoints is available, you will be able to add to different services without having to just go into um, a uh, Wikidata server or Wikibase server because you can simply apply the um, vocabularies that you are familiar with. In this particular example, um, we were using Wikidata to get to Library of Congress item. And in the case, if Library Library Congress um, LCSH is in a triple store and it and enables the Sparkle query, you could essentially direct a query a Library Congress endpoints to bring back the value you wanted to see. So if you look at that Wikidata item that was brought back, um, you would notice that the label from the Library of Congress is different to what it is being currently displayed as a label in Wikidata. Um, and so here we are relying whoever entered the content in Wikidata to add the property showing what Library of Congress shows. So, so the gist is if the beauty of connecting different information services through RDF is that if you have a Sparkle query ability open on your server, you could really conduct a lot of queries to fit your research and, and then embed the output onto a website or web pages or your you know, faculty research output and whatnot. So it is very exciting to, for us to see this is finally making sense. The work that we put in as um, link open data, um, it is finally coming together. And I hope you guys, all of us uh, share that vision that it's, we are getting there soon enough. Yeah, thank you, Jackie. Yeah, it's, it is very exciting to see, you know, two different data sets pulled together so smoothly. All right, um, so I think we'd like to open open up the floor for questions. So feel free to unmute yourself or um, you know uh, use the chat function, and we'll try to um, address any questions anyone might have. And I apologize. There's a school. There's a schoolyard across the street from my apartment, so there's probably a lot of noise coming in. So I'll mute myself. While folks are getting their, or turn my video on. While folks are getting their thoughts together for questions, I this might be a good time to remind folks that there's another session first thing um, tomorrow on Wikibase um, and Wikibase Cloud presented by Georgina uh, Burnett, who is uh, works for Wikimedia Deutschland. So um, that 
would be a different take on a lot of what we've done today and is probably worth going to. Georgina has, of course, also presented at a previous Wikibase working hour. And I see a question in the chat. Um, what are additional advantages of Wikibase reconciliation in place of the inbuilt Wikibeta reconciliation and open refine? And I don't know if one of you wants to take that or Jackie even. Um, sure, I'll, I'll just, I'll take that. Um, so um, if you, I, I mean, it's mostly, um, the advantage is mostly if you do have a, a wiki base that you're using, um, you know, uh, whether it's, uh, you, you, that's separate from wiki data, you might need to, you know, perform some reconciliation on your, on that wiki base, um, because it's likely if you're, if you've gone to the effort of, uh, you know, setting up a Wikibase instance that's uh, not all of your of the content of that Wikibase instance is in Wikidata. So, um, and that certainly is true uh, for the Wikibase cloud instance that we've set up. Um, like a lot of the properties and items are not actually um, in Wikidata. Um, so, uh, so it's, yeah, it's just, uh, uh, it wouldn't, it's sort of a very different use case. Um, it's, it's, it's uh, something, it's content that's in the, and data that's in the Wikibase instance um, probably is uh, at most in par only partially present in Wikidata or not present at all. So it's a similar, it meets a similar need, like where you might have a data set that you need to bring into Harmony with the Wikibase instance, um, but uh, yeah, it's there's not um, it it shouldn't it's not something that can like necessarily be met by just working with Wikidata because the whole idea of having a sort of separate Wikibase instance would be that um, you know there's uh, there's information that you don't necessarily um, want to share or which is out of scope maybe for Wikidata more broadly. Um, so yeah, so, but you would still have reconciliation needs possibly for, for that data set. Oop. And I see Zoe Dobbs has a, has a question. Um, is there anything coming in the near future with Wikibase cloud development that we're particularly looking forward to? Um, I don't know, honestly, uh, to, 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 to you know, tell you the truth. Um, I mean, I think there's some things um, uh, we talked about the query service or Esther did today, uh, and um, I believe uh, like you can't uh, do a lot of customization of the query service uh, in terms of uh, setting uh, prefixes. Um, so if you've used the Wikidata query service, uh, you may be familiar with the fact that there are there's sort of a, a maybe a few dozen or uh, uh, predefined prefixes that you can just use. You don't have to like, um, that saves you the trouble of having to use full URI, URIs or um, declaring your own prefixes, um, but you cannot actually, uh, you know, set up those customized prefixes in a Wikibase Cloud instance. So that would be maybe something, um, those are things, that's the type of thing that it would be great to have in Wikibase Cloud, but I'm not sure if that's part of the development pathway. Um, so I would be curious to see Georgina's presentation tomorrow to see what they're planning for the future of Wikibase Cloud because I'm not I'm not actually sure what's going on uh, in terms of the development. But yeah, I'm sure there could be a a wish list. Um, and I don't know. Does anyone else have any thoughts about that? Like in terms of uh, Wikibase Cloud and things that would be nice to have in Wikibase Cloud. Um, this isn't actually a technical aspect, but more the community aspect. I am excited that they are opening it up beyond those Wiki, Wiki, uh, WB stack instances, um, mostly just because I'm always interested to see what other people do with their data and their data models. Um, and I think we can sort of learn from each other about what how we might do things or it might give us new insights into our own data. Um, and obviously, I'm really, I'm especially interested in sort of how we move forward with sort of these sort of heterogeneous wiki bases that allow for different data models, but then are able to communicate with each other and sort of where are the tensions in that and what might we learn from that in terms of um, what is really the, you know, what I, th I think often we um, don't necessarily really understand just how granular data 
needs to be like what is and like the different later levels of data granularity and how that affects interoperability so i'm pretty excited about that but that's a pretty geeky thing to be excited about and it's not functionality it's more like what what will we learn from the experience of doing it And I think one thing I wanted to keep in mind is that the Wikibase cloud was was intended to be a servers. So um, if you have a special data modeling needs, I think is encouraged to establish a local Wikibase. So that will give you more flexibility in terms of how you want to model data and then connect to other Wikibases. Um, and so I am very, a bit doubtful that they would uh, have a lot of customizations features enabled in Wikibase Cloud. All right. Um, well, I guess if we don't have any any more uh, questions, uh, we still have some time. So I don't know if any of the if anyone else had any comments or thoughts that they wanted to share, um, or if we should just uh, kind of end things now. Okay. All right. Well, um, yeah, thanks to everyone for, for attending. And uh, we hope this was uh, useful to folks. And um, yeah, um, and if you have any questions um, um, uh, that occur to you, feel free to email this, this email address um, and, uh, you know, get in touch with the group and, uh, yeah, uh, the GitHub will stay up for a little while. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to play around. Uh, the Wikibase Cloud instance is uh, a work in progress, as we said, but it is um, you know accessible to all. So feel free to play around with the query service um, and poke around in there a little bit. Um, uh, we hope it's something of interest um, to folks. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, we hope to see you uh, at future Wikibase working hours. Um, uh, our project page is listed at the top of that GitHub. Um, do pay attention to that um, if you'd uh, be interested in attending future sessions. And um, and uh, we hope to have some programming announced uh, soon um, for the for the last quarter of 2022. Uh, but if you have ideas for programs or things that you'd be interested in, you could also email this uh, this email address uh, with program ideas. Um, so yeah, and I want to just thank uh, thank the whole group of uh, conveners, um, not uh, you know listed at the start of the slides for putting this together under um, somewhat uh, somewhat trying circumstances with uh, the migration of our instance uh, happening concurrent to the. <laughs> uh basically uh happening uh concurrent to like our session here being confirmed um and uh yeah uh, i'm glad this mostly uh came off pretty smoothly so um thanks to everyone and uh yeah hope to see y'all soon <laughs> <laughs>